for the introduction. In fact, I'm um, sorry, I'm not Sebastian Flickbeiner, I'm Vincent Lucas, but uh, I want really to thank in Sebastian Flickbeiner while I do a total really good work on this project he is my co-author, so really thank you, Sebastian. So we come from Strasbourg University and we would like to share with you some experiences on management and toward scalable management. Uh, with our file synchronization and sharing service. Uh, we use C file at Strasbourg, but I think we can uh, think of this uh, presentation of other, uh, other service based uh, to, to share file and synchronize it. So let's start with the background and see what we can do about it. At Strasbourg University, we start our services for researchers, teachers, and employees. I know not the students, it will come one day, I, I hope so. So it's about um, 11,000 people, maybe only 10% use it yet. But all these people are not in a big university, they are distributed over 900 small structures, such as schools, laboratories, and so on. So the problem is when we provide the service, we have started with a simple model we have a standard account for everyone. The problem is they use it, they like it, they have requests. So we have custom requests for specific teams, projects, and so on. And at this scale, we cannot do it manually and we cannot do it in a centralized fashion. So we have to find something and this is our goal to try to automate it and if we can, delegate this management to the user, we know which what he wants. So we try to do it for accounts, guest accounts, creating groups, shared repositories, maybe dealing with quotas. That's the goal, so let's start it. A simple example is a laboratory comes as a new Wizwo project and asks for lambda terabytes of uh, data on C file. So that's the request. Um, what they mean, it's really what the require action here. So we have to create uh, anonymous account, so they, it's reusable if the team change and so on. We, we allocate the terabytes dedicated for this project and then we have to create a dedicated group to, to populate it with the labs guy from these laboratories and they will cooperate with other corporations. So we have to create guest account and to populate them too in this group. And at the end, we have to bind together creating a basic default repositories and to share these repositories with the created group and of course to assist with the WISWO accounts. So that's the program. The first solution is using the web interface. It's cool, it's a secret, you can use this Konami code, it's click, 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 type, click, 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 type, click, and click, and it works out of the box but only for a client, um, tiny configuration change. Try it, try to create a group, share a repository for 10 people, only 10 people, do it on the development uh, platform, try to copy it, you will see you meant three, FIDA, maybe uh, 10 errors, uh, typing the email, uh, forgetting to share the repositories and so on, and it takes a lot of time. So it's not a solution. The worst thing is it's centralized you need the administration uh, rights to do it. So, nah, it's not the solution. Solution number two is to try to use C file web services. It's a well, it's a REST I API, it's well documented, you can see a little screenshot of it, and you can first try it. With the web interface of C file of your instance, you can type it with, uh, it's a ping, so you have API uh, two slash ping, and you have the result. You have your command, the result, you can change the HTTP method and so on. It's really cool to try. If you want to go further, you can use curl or something like this. It's exactly the same. So you can start batching it. So we have a good starting point, but it's not enough. You have some work to do, and this why we need to the solution two plus plus, which use four. So let's start, let's start this work. But what is for? I, I don't know if everybody here is 
uh, used to use it. So it's simply a web service description. We are talking about this this morning. And to describe it, you just have to save it in a simple JSON document. So nothing technical or everybody can use it. So what's the good point is that with this description, you can generate really high level client object easily. We will see an example in the further slides. And if you like one language, to the flavor you want. You have uh, JavaScript, Lua, Python, and so on. So choose what you want. And uh, in our point of view, it's nowadays a good practice, a best practice to use um, this poor description for every web service we have on the university. It's not done yet for, uh, for all, but we're trying to. So the most important, we can reuse it, and with the example, I wish you would reuse it. So let's start it. We have the C5 web services, which are documented, and we try to produce a sport description. You don't have to make all the method once. You can start. So we start with the repo method, which lists you the attributes of a repository. So it's really easy. You have the path, the required params. If you have optional params, you have them too. You can expect a status. You can say if you need to be authenticated to request this, uh, me this method, and so on. So no problem here. When we have this description, we have to instantiate it. So here is an example. I will not decide it. Just to know, you can copy paste it, try just changing the credentials, changing the URL to your server. You can use it directly. And of course, the repository ID, use one which exists on your system. But you can really copy, copy it, and it works. So it's just to say that the important thing is the first block is to create the support client. The second one is to demonstrate how, you, how we can authenticate on C5. And the, and the third one is to give a simple example of the method we have seen before, the repo method, which use just an argument, which is the repo ID. So what you have described, you can use it. So if you have other method, just make support client dot I don't know, the that user, and so on. So we have uh, the first part, which is you can use it. But for our point of view, of view it's not it. We have to create batch method, which can call several of the spore methods of the spore client. So <coughs> the easiest way to illustrate it is for the guest account. Creating a guest account, if we resume it, it's checking if the account exists. Create it, set the quota to zero. You can do it with only three methods of the sport description. So we create these kind of methods, and we create a, an interface to expose the spore methods and the batch methods together. So when you use the method library, you don't see if you use one or the other. It's it's really the same thing. At this point, every administrator wants one thing, the command line interface. So just an example of the help when you use it. It only takes the description files and the batch method and generates automatically all the method you can have. So actually, you add a description in the description file, the support description file, it creates a command line method, so you can call it. So the example is the first one is really the C file methods, which are described in the sports descriptions. And the two last one, it's batch method for creating the guest account. And the really last one takes a file, it creates a group, a set of owners, set of members of the group, create a repository, share the, the repository with the group, and so on. So you can do things. So we reach the first point here. We can automate our process. It's not yet delegated. So we have to add something a little more complicated. It's the point. So we want that the user can give, acquire rights 
to use this method without being an administrator of C file. So we have a web interface, and behind the way, this web interface, you can, it's doing two things. The first one, it will ask your LDAP, an external database, and other web services if the user has the right to do such actions. And checking the rights, it will expose the users the method you want to expose to C files, which can be administrator's method. So you check the rights, you display an interface, and you call the specific methods. Always the same example with the guest creation. So this is the only modification we have done in C file. It's creating this link, which redirects you to the US, uh, UW SGI services. And then we have the checked. We are already talk about it. We, here we check the Django, Django credentials. We check the LDAP rights. And if we have the rights for this user, we display this page. He can enter a file or type only the email address you want to create for the guest account. Click on it. We use the batch method we have already described, and then we have the result. It sends an email to, the, uh, to this email, and the user knows they are invited. So it's a simple example, but we did it. We have a, a method to automate this management and one to delegate. Let's conclude on it, and we will discuss. So the first thing to remember is to automate. You have, in this solution, you rely on the well-documented, really well-documented C5 web services. And we are, we are adding there a sport description. It's not terminated yet. We are about 40% for the description. It's publicly available. If you need uh, a function that is not yet there, just email us and we will add it. It's really easy. Just take a time to add it and check if it works really good. But normally, no problem. And then you have the client. You have an example in this presentation. Don't forget, if you don't like Python, there's a lot of language you can use with the same description file. It doesn't change. And then we have a delegate process management, which do two things, check the right of the user of your central system, uh, like LDAP, external database, or whatever you want, and then expose only the corresponding uh, commands of C file. So thank you for your attention, and if you have questions, you're welcome. So thank you for your interesting contribution. Questions, please. Oh. Why did you create your own standard instead of uh, reusing existing ones? Uh, so we can use, repeat it, please. Why did you create uh, your own standard instead of uh, reusing ones like Swagger, for example, that was presented before like APYs, for the API specification? I don't understand. Do you want to know is SPOR is the standards or? No, no. Uh, SPOR is your own, uh, let's say, uh, language for a specification of the API, right? SPOR, yes, it's a uh, standards for the description, the language. Yeah, and my question is, uh, did you like try to use another standard? No, in fact, no. It's really easy. In your university, this is the standard. We don't have the choice. Okay. So, and maybe I can go back. One of the contributor of Britney, the Python Spore uh, client, is one of the IT guys. So I don't know who them. Okay. So it's really um, a team best practice, and we don't really have the choice to to investigate other solutions. Okay, so it's really uh, specific for your university. Yeah. It's very, okay. So it's the best practice for, for your university. But it, it's really used in a lot of place. So it's uh, the description at spore.github.io. 
is really widely spread and there's, I think there's a version two that's coming and it's always evolving. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Any other question for Vincent, that's all? Yeah, that's a wish. Okay, thank you very much thank for you. your contribution.